RBI, that's the mindset you want from your players because those types of players win games and championships. Time again to head out to the ballpark, PNC Park. Expecting another good crowd tonight as the final homestand of the season continues with game one of a four game set against the San Diego Padres. The Direct TV National League Central Division standings the Pirates and Cardinals still on top, 87 and 62, three and a half games ahead of the Cincinnati Reds. Hi, everybody. With Steve Blass, I'm Tim Neverett. Robbie Insmikowski will join us in a short while. The Pirates winners yesterday and getting back after it here against the Padres, a team that's given them a tough time at PNC Park over the years. Jose Tabata really has settled nicely into that leadoff role. He hopes to lead them to a win tonight. Absolutely. Uh, Marte being down, you needed somebody out there, and he has done a very, very good job. And that's kind of continuing the theme of this baseball team, Tim. When somebody's gone down, somebody has filled in. Melanson for Grilly, Tabata now doing a wonderful job for Starling Marte. And uh, he just picked it up in the Pirates, by the way, 15 and 5 when he has been involved. So Jose Tabata continues to get it done from the leadoff spot, getting on base, getting extra base hits, and scoring runs. Tonight, a guy trying to get it done on the mound is A.J. Burnett. He looks for his ninth win, and he'll face Andrew Kashner. And very, very good last time out against the San Diego Padres. He pitched a, a doozy. He's got a history with this ball club, too. What, uh, several years ago, a no-hitter against the San Diego Padres. So A.J. Is, is a guy you want out there all the time because of his veteran presence. He knows how to pitch this time of year. So uh, I think the Pirates are looking for a good start from A.J. A.J. returned the first 13 Texas Rangers in a row in his last outing. So tonight the stretch run continues in September as Clint Hurdle's guys are looking to have a positive impact against this San Diego Padre team. Lineups and first pitch coming up from PNC Park.
Game winning RBI yesterday. His first RBI as a pirate. And the AJ fans with the Batman symbols in attendance tonight. As AJ Burnett has taken the hill and continues his warm ups as we get set for the first pitch of this one. The Padres are in for the first of four straight games. Bud Black's lineup for San Diego. Will Venable will play center field. Lexi Amarista and Jed Jerko from Morgantown. Chase Headley batting the cleanup spot. The switch hitter tied for fourth in the National League with five home runs this month. Tommy Medica is at first base. Kyle Blanks in right. Former Pirate Ronnie Cedeno, the shortstop with the catcher Renee Rivera and Andrew Kashner batting ninth against A.J. Burnett. AJ Burnett, uh, the numbers for AJ brought to you by Chevrolet. Start number 28. One complete game under his belt. And this will be career start number nine against the San Diego Padres. Two and five in his previous seven. Pretty good crowd here tonight on a Monday night at PNC Park. The Pirates continue the stretch run. Start tonight tied for first place with St. Louis. The Cardinals on the road tonight in Denver against the Colorado Rockies. Cincinnati three and a half back there on the road in interleague play against Houston. First pitch to Venable. Swung on foul back in a strike one. Still sounds funny. Interleague play against Houston. <laughs> Some things we have to get used to still. I know. Interleague play in September. Another thing. And the 0 1 pitch. Nothing in two to Venable. So A.J. Burnett making his 28th start for the Pirates. Two and five in eight starts against the Padres in his career. His last appearance against them was a win on the 20th of August, and the other one was back in 2001 when he pitched a no hitter. And he strikes out Venable on three pitches. The throw down by Russell Martin to Morneau to finish up. The strikeout with the ball in the dirt. Yep, you keep chasing those things downstairs. The pitchers are going to keep on throwing them. Strike two was down in that neighborhood. This one's down further in the neighborhood, and he chases that one. So, yep, don't throw that ball in the zone unless you have to. AJ pitched Wednesday against the Texas Rangers and started the game out the same way with a strikeout of the first man he would face. And Alexei Amarista takes a strike. 55 for Amarista. And the pitch from Burnett. To left field. Tavada. Nice and easy for out number two. Nice start for AJ. And really like to see that from AJ because his last two starts, he's worked a total of nine innings and given up 10 earned runs. And you combine that with the fact that the Pirates have scored 15 in those two runs where he's gone one and one. Uh, could be a little bit better. In fact, the last three starts for AJ, the Pirates in those three games have scored 22 runs. That's averaging seven runs a game. Jed Jerko, first ball swinging, lifts it into left center field. And Andrew McKetchen makes the tidy, pitch. Tidy. And a six pitch inning for AJ Burnett. Nice, tidy start. Pirates coming to bat when we return.
Danny. Yeah, weather's a little different too than when he did that. <laughs> Some of the they might have been with him as right arrived. <laughs> yep. Let's take a look at the Pirates Toyota lineup. Leading off, Jose Tabata. Tabata 273. Then Neil Walker and Andrew McCutcheon in 13 games during the month of September. 422 average, seven extra base hits. He's been on fire. Justin Morneau on the cleanup spot. Bird bats fifth, Alvarez sixth, Russell Martin, the catcher, hitting seventh. Quinn Barmas bats eighth. He's a shortstop tonight. AJ Burnett bats ninth against San Diego right-hander Andrew Kashner. This 27-year-old right-hander has done a good job for the Pirates. Nine and eight, 340 ERA. This will be his 25th start. This is a guy that formerly worked out of the bullpen a lot uh, when he was with the Cubs before coming over. He has done a, a terrific job. And a good live arm. Andrew Kashner, uh, good reviews, rave reviews from the San Diego folks. You see a lot of fastballs out of him, two seamers and four seamers. And he has on occasion gotten the numbers on the gun up to 100. Hello. One ball and one strike to Kashner. And this one fouled off. 95. Well, perhaps the Cubs had a wealth of pitchers. They could afford to let him go. Well, he was a bullpen guy with Chicago. He was a, an excellent closer in college at TCU. And then with the Cubs... Came out of the bullpen. In fact, Kashner made his major league debut with the Cubs here at PNC hey, Park. It was on Memorial Day in 2010. Very much a, a power guy out of Conroe, Conroe, Texas. He was drafted by three clubs before signing with the Cubs in the first round. He really helped his cause by turning down three offers earlier. Jose Tabata. With the two ball, two strike count. Jose at 273 and over his last three games, four for 11. Yesterday he led off in the first inning with a triple and scored on a wild pitch. Ground ball towards second base. Jed Jerko is there, flips on to first. And there's one out. Great defensive uh, swing by Jose Tabata, just trying to get the bat on the ball. Behind Cashner in the field tonight. Alexia Marista is the left fielder. Will Venable in center. Kyle Blanks playing right field. Chase Headley at third. Ronnie Zedanio at short. Jed Jerko at second. Tommy Medica is the first baseman. And Lene Rivera behind the plate. And Medica, a guy we did not see when we were in San Diego last month. His first appearance against the Pirates. And Walker, ground ball to Jerko. Two down quickly. Walker didn't stay up there very long, and he is 0 for 1. And Bud Black, a left handed pitcher. And he, like Clint Hurdle, spent a good chunk of their careers with the Kansas City Royals, but not at the same time. They did not play together. Bud came along later after Clint had already left. Andrew McCutcheon at the plate. Catch hitting 326 overall, third in the National League in batting. Takes a strike. The accolades for McCutcheon certainly will continue to pile up. MVP candidate this year. Strike two. Certainly will get consideration as as he should. No doubt about that. The Pirates winnings it certainly helps that. Nudge it along. Ever since the end of April, he's leading all National League batters, hitting 348 since the 30th of April. 0 and 2, and Kashner ready to go. Outside for a ball, up to 97. And Kashner would come out of the bullpen for the Cubs, and uh, initially for the Padres, he would try to let it go and get it up to triple digits. Time there. Changed speeds. Took him 11 pitches to get through the inning as he strikes out McCutcheon. On to the second. No score at PNC Park.
on Route Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Let's go, box. Well, sign store is open tonight, Steve. Yep. They love the Sharks. Yeah, why not? And they love the Jolly Roger. Yes, they do. They're loving their buckos. Third baseman Chase Headley. Switch hitter. Swinging and missing. That's a good one there. Burnham. Not Bookham. Well, Burnham, Bookham. <laughs> Yeah, that's the best looking sign I've seen in about 20 years. Oh, one pitch to Headley. Missed for a ball, one and one. Headley, 245 hitter. Good chance for us to be out of here in about 45 minutes to an hour over there. These guys are going. <laughs> I've got a proposal. What's that? The next time they start thinking about more instant replay, do two different times of game. Break it down. Time of game for the first six innings, time of game for. Innings seven, eight, and nine. Give, give people a perspective about pace of play. That's quicker in the first six. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Especially with the plethora of pitching changes we see late That's in games these days. What I'm talking about. Two balls and two strikes. You know, pitching so different today out of the bullpen where you have a guy who'll sit out there maybe for three or four days and then he comes in and Depending on the matchup and the situation, faces one guy and he's out of there. 2 2. Headley right at Barnes for the out. I can't think of uh, Chase Headley without thinking of Blazing Saddles. Headley! Headley! <laughs> Not Headley. Headley! A lot of good lines from that movie. But let's just stop there with that one. Okay. Might be safer. Well, Burnett, four in a row to start the game. Now he'll face Tommy Medica. Medica with a five game hitting streak for San Diego. 316 hitter. Medica started at first base for the fifth straight game yesterday against Atlanta. Had a solo home run. Went one for four. He has a hit in each of his first five big league starts. 1 0 pitch. That's a strike. One ball and one strike. Well, you like the way AJ has gotten off the schneid here on this ball game. The start he's got looks very aggressive. A lot of good pitches. It's called getting your feet on the ground. Coming in from the bullpen. There's a strike. Medica called up. That is contract selected from Double A San Antonio last Tuesday. Face the Phillies hit his first major league home run off of Cliff Lee. One two pitch. Popped him up. Walker going out. Bird coming in. Bird calls him off. Two men out. Football season underway, and you can get the latest on your favorite teams during press conference Tuesday on Root Sports. Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin takes the podium first, live at noon, followed by Pitts Paul Christ at 1, and WVU head coach Dana Holgerson at 1.30. Press conference Tuesday, tomorrow, starting at noon on Root Sports. Two out spaces empty for the right fielder, Kyle Blanks. Ball one to Blanks. Didn't play yesterday against Atlanta. In fact, the Padres, this team does not have any quit in them, even though they're 17 and a half out, tied for third in the West with San Francisco. They took two of three from the Braves over the weekend. <laughs> Braves playing quite well right now. No hesitation for AJ to come upstairs. He has become a guy that works primarily downstairs, but he's not afraid with that still live fastball at 93 miles an hour to come up every once in a while when it's clear. A base hit. Blanks comes up with a two out single. First hit off AJ. First hit of the ball game. We had a no hitter interest yesterday. Goes away a little earlier this evening. Are you saying he's broken up the no hitter, Steve? Sure has. 
That not only that has broken up the perfect game. Oh, that too. Francisco Liriano had one going yesterday for a while through six. There's Ronnie Cedeno. Ronnie began the year with the Houston Astros. During his time in the American League, hit 220 with a home run. But overall, with the Padres, his National League numbers, 298, two homers and nine runs batted in. Two outs, blanks aboard first. Daniel fouls it off and it's nothing in two. I never really had enough time to figure out whether he preferred Ronnie or Ronnie. Ronnie. Okay. Had to ask him several times. No balls and two strikes. Sedania takes outside. Good block by Martin. He had to slide a long way to his right. Ronnie was kind of a, a lightning rod here. You know, he had some some good days and some days where uh, he heard it from the fans. Also, he heard some cheers. One ball, two strikes. Sedania waits. AJ's one, two. Got him. Two outs to throw down by Martin. Play and catch. And strikeout number two for AJ Burnett. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Hopefully more smiles as this game goes along. Pirates looking to get on the board. Tonight's Allegheny Health Network injury update. The Reds have activated Johnny Cueto off the 16-day DL to make the start tonight against the Astros. Cueto has been out since late June with a lat strain, and it was Cueto's third stint on the DL this season as well. When he's been healthy, he's gone four and two with a 3.33 earned run average. Cueto also. Slated to start Friday here against the Pirates in game one of that series. We saw him when he went through uh, one of those sessions of miseries with a lot removed from a game here at yeah. PNC. Justin Morno takes strike one. Morno with the RBI yesterday to win it. It was his first RBI by the Pirates. He had a streak of 13 straight games without an RBI. Second longest streak of his career. Longest was 14 straight games in 2007. August 30th was the last day that he performed for the Twins, hit a home run in Arlington against the Rangers, and that was the last RBI of any kind he had before driving in the game winning run yesterday. 
couldn't have picked a better time. So he doesn't go for huge stretches of time without driving in runs. Come back with a cash. One oh broke his back. One three on the put out. And Morno is out. Tonight's Barrel Automotive League leaders stat. The National League leaders in slugging percentage. Goldschmidt of Arizona, Kadire of Colorado, Worth of Washington, and then one two. Bird and McCutcheon. Actually they're four five, but one two in a row. Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. Touch with a 517 slugging percentage. Top five in the league. He's top five in a lot of offensive categories. Marlon Bird. Seven game hitting streak going for Bird. Two hits yesterday. Clint Hurdle was talking today about both Marlon Bird and Justin Morneau. These veteran guys. Put in a ton of time in the big leagues and have yet to experience a pennant race. And both have expressed their excitement about being here in Pittsburgh and trying to help these Buckos win a World Series. Won a division first. A very tight division race, the tightest in baseball. Well, they all make a lot of money. They want the ring. Play for the ring. It stays alive. Foul ball. Twenty three home runs numbers twenty two and twenty three have come with the Pirates. One out base is empty bottom of the second inning for Bird. And he strikes out. Kashner got him. And Kashner might have been that same pitch he threw to McCutcheon in the first inning. Taking Cut about slider. 10 miles an hour off. Of him. 84 85 miles an hour. That's yeah, slider. This guy, it's interesting to uh, think about his scenario working out of the bullpen uh, with the Cubs and a little bit with the Padres. And now his last five starts, he's gone at least seven innings. And this guy has some uh, mileage in him. He did the little starting early in his career, but then went to bullpen work. But, uh, I mean, he's, he's built like a stud, 6'6, 219. He throws like a stud. Maybe he's going to be a stud. Maybe the. I'd have him start in the way he looks and the way he's thrown. Pedro hits one to center field. Venable backing up. He'll make the catch. Six up and six down for the Pirates. After two innings of play, Pirates nothing, Andres nothing. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. 
and by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go box. No score, top of the third inning. And the bottom part of the order up for San Diego. And Rivera will lead off from the pitcher, Andrew Kashner. And the top of the order, Will Venable against A.J. Burnett. Time for Jackets. Close to that time to bundle up. Great time of year. Jackets, sweaters, pennant races. 66 degrees was the game time temperature, and that'll fall tonight. Coming in on a full moon, what, uh, I think uh, Thursday's full moon, the 19th. It's getting there right now over the uh, old U.S. Steel building. 0 oh, 2 to Rivera. Just 192, five runs batted in. Rivera seems to have had some success catching Kashner, or vice versa. Kashner's had success with Rivera catching, so he's out there tonight. Did he go? No, says first base umpire Mike Everett. Nick Hundley, normally the catcher, but Rivera getting the start here tonight in game one. Yeah, we're not going to see the the moon Thursday night here, Steve. You see it somewhere. We will see it somewhere, <laughs> but not here. It's a 12:30 game, day yeah. game on Thursday. There goes Rivera. He's out on strikes. Let's check in with Robbie. Well, guys, uh, earlier today, Pirates announced a couple minor league awards. Andrew Lambeau winning the pl uh, minor league player of the year. And this is the pitcher of the year right here. This is Tyler Glasnow, who had a fantastic season for the West Virginia Power, playing some low-A baseball. Tyler, what's it like just to be here in PNC Park collecting the minor league pitcher of the year award today? I mean, it's an honor. I mean, it's really it's awesome being here, just seeing everything. I'm really excited for the team. I mean, it's just... It's a really good experience. You know, you had a ton of strikeouts. Well, 164 to be exact. You had an ERA just over two. What led to your success this season at West Virginia? Really, I feel like just kind of sticking with my plan from spring training, kind of listening to all the coaches just telling me what it takes to be successful and just really following up with what they say, and I just it ended up well. You know, Teller, your fifth-round pick back in 2011. Here you sit at PNC Park just the second time in your career you've ever been here. What kind of inspiration does this give you? I mean, it's awesome. Just seeing the team do this well, I mean, just... It really drives everyone from rookie ball to everywhere. I mean, it's just it's a really good experience, and just being here is awesome. How about meeting Clint Hurdle, meeting the players? What was that experience like, and how would you describe it? I mean, amazing, really, just kind of all the experience they had, just being around them and just tell. I mean, being down there was just, it was amazing. It really was. Talking to them, it was a, I had a really good time. You know, Bob Walk, you guys, same high school back in L.A. Um, what's it like to have that in common with a pirate legend like him? It's awesome. I mean, uh just everyone right when I got drafted they're like wow you really got to meet Bob Walk you know went to Hart High School and I meet mean, just that's a really kind of rare thing to have and I think that's awesome. Now what's your plan here when you look forward starting after this I think you're playing some instructional league ball but what do you think the, uh, the process is going to be like going forward? I really don't know I'm gonna take it one day at a time but instructs and then off season and then another spring training. Why the high strikeout total do you think? I, I don't know I was <laughs> just kind of going out there and pitching it just kind of fell into place I guess. Good stuff. Congratulations to you, Tyler. Appreciate it. Thank Tim, you. those strikeouts most of the Pirates minor leaguers had since Tom Gorzolani quite a few years ago. Yeah, all we, we heard about all season long was Tyler Glasnow and what he was doing with the West Virginia Power. Andrew Lambeau, minor league player of the year. Of course, he's here being rewarded with a big league stint. Lambeau called up on September 3rd. The last call up. He was up a little before that in August as well. Great experience for Tyler, and uh, that's what you want to do, uh, whatever level you're at. Make them remember your name. Pitch well enough, so hey, they've got to pay attention to you. That's uh, that's kind of the foundation, and uh, just work your way on up. Keep on trucking. Well, AJ has struck out the first two men looking here in the third inning. And Frank Cooley, the president, uh, shaking hands and presenting Tyler with his award, and Andrew would get it next. That's uh, you know just to step out on a major league field. Still nothing like it. It's whether you're a baseball player or a fan, you get out there uh, before a game. It's 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 a different look. You know, you can sit in the stands all you want, but you walk out on that warning track, on that dirt, on that grass. It is pretty special. Sitting he's in the doing it tonight, but he wants to be in uniform down there with Lambo. Yeah, well, he's he's doing with his life exactly what he wants to be doing, and that's as he would say, that's pretty awesome. 
What a year for the young man. Looking forward to following his progress through the rest of the minor league chain. 1-2 to Will Venable. And he strikes out for the second time. That's five strikeouts for A.J. Burnett for the first three innings. Two and a half gone by. No score. Sky Blast, powered by Zambelli Fireworks. This Saturday at 7.05 as the Bucks host the Reds. Stay after the game. Neon Trees will be here performing all their hits like Everybody Talks and Animal. If you already have tickets, you can get passes to watch the show from the field at pirates.com slash concerts. Be another big weekend, a huge weekend with Cincinnati coming in. It's hoping to raise that a few more times. Now, those guys will be cold by the sixth inning. What do you want to bet? Yeah, but the thing is, they're not going to be old for a long time. <laughs> they got they got that going for them, which which is nice. <laughs> You'd rather be young and freezing. Yep. Russell Martin pops this one up to center field. Venable is called off. I don't know if he lost it or not, but Kyle Blanks bailed him out. And we've got some pitching uh, going he, on. He might have lost that ball. Andrew Kashner can't find it either. It's a tough sky right now. Sorry, Andrew. When you throw a pop up, somebody's going to get it. Yeah, Venable lost it. No, Blanks bailed him out. You're exactly right, because Venable wasn't going to get to it. Just this one time of the night right now, it's a real tough sky once the ball gets. To a certain height. It's not quite dark yet. It's pretty to look at from here, but uh, might be a little uh, difficult down on the playing field. Anyway, we've got a couple right handers dealing. We do. And uh, Kashner's getting them out, and AJ is striking them out. Kashner's been pretty good over his last 10 starts. 278 ERA and hasn't allowed more than two runs in his last four starts. In each of his last four starts. A reliever that's finding out he can go deep into ball games. One two to Barmas. Two balls, two strikes. 85 mile an hour slider. Right hander is going to expect to see that slider a lot. Lefties will see more of a changeup as a secondary pitch off the fastball. Nice shot right there. 2 2 pitch. Barmas off the glove and a diving stop by Jerko. If not for Kashner, that ball's in center field and Jerko doesn't make that play. That's a tremendous play by the former WVU Mountaineer, Jed Jerko. 
ball was smoked and Jerko went up the middle. And the Padres get the deflection. Terrific play. He plays hard. That was a tremendous play. Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl gives us a good look. Throwing from one knee and having a little mustard. That wasn't a blooper over to first base. Well done. We're in San Diego. I asked Jed by the batting cage. Anybody in Morgantown you want us to say hi to? He just said, no, there's too many of them. Just say hi to everybody. Saw a big sign, a fan coming across the bridge. Carrying a big uh, a big sign. Yeah, this is the one I'm talking about right here. Jed Jerko, number nine. Ball and two strikes to AJ. There's some of the folks who have come to cheer Jed Jerko. Jay Burnett, a two ball, two strike count. Just four hits and 52 at bats. Two odds, bases empty. Cashner deals. And AJ hits one over the mound. There's Sedano. Plenty of time to make eight. the play. Well, how about Andrew Cashner? Nine up and nine down. AJ Burnett will try to counter when we come back. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. No score, just one hit in the game, and it belongs to Kyle Blanks of the Padres. Pirates have gone nine up and nine down to the first three innings, so we start the top of the fourth. Time for the whiff, brought to you by Head and Shoulders, now with Old Spice and A.J. Starting the game off with a bunch of them. Number one. Downstairs. You getting the idea? Downstairs, number three. Oh, a little higher. And we go back downstairs where it's safe. So nine batters or nine uh, nine outs for AJ. Five of them strikes out the last four in a row. And when you need a curveball for strike three, you keep calm and call AJ. AJ, by the way, needs 12 more strikeouts this season to get to the 200 total for the third time in his career. We'll see how many more he could shave off that total and get closer to 200. What do you figure he has? Uh, he's starting tonight and he's already got five. Going to have at least two more starts. Yeah, I'll have at least two, and then see what happens in the final weekend. Alexei Marista, 
Flying out to left field his first time up. Andre left fielder. 254 average he has five homers. For San Diego he's played all over the outfield this year. One ball and one strike. And Marista started in center field yesterday went 0 for 3. And he's 0 for his last 18. So he is in a slump. On one pitch. And AJ will field this. And now Amarista is 0 for his last 19. One out in the Pondre fourth inning. You could tweet us using the hashtag Bucks Booth. Send us your comments, questions, and thoughts about tonight's game. We've got questions for Steve. Whatever you're thinking about, you can send it to hashtag Bucks Booth. Isn't that the pound sign on your phone? It can be, yeah. You can call us too. Yeah. I'll give you Tim's phone number. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Social media well, baseball has used become to, part of the viewing process. Uh, the thing now. is, baseball at the park. Baseball used to be the national pastime. That stuff is now the texting stuff. The texting is. Jed Jerko, 0 for 1. He flying to McCutcheon in left center field his first time up. Swinging a miss. He's got some good numbers in terms of power. He's a second baseman hitting in the third spot with 18 home runs. But he did come up as a third baseman, which is a power position. Well, you don't hit third in any lineup unless you can do some damage. You don't pick those third position spots out of a hat. One two pitch. That's outside. So the numbers might be a little misleading when you think of a second baseman. There are some second basemen that do produce. So you look at Brandon Phillips of the Reds, who'll be in here this weekend. He's over 100 RBIs. Mr. Sandberg, Mr. Morgan. Then some second baseman hit, hit it over the fence. Two, two is low. Three and two to Jerko. Jed's brother played football. For the Mountaineers. His older brother played uh, linebacker there. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. AJ pulls the string. Changes speeds and gets strikeout number six. Not that automatic 3 2 fastball that we saw a lot of coming up through. Not at this level. Doesn't have to be a good one all the time. Just the fact that somebody's looking for something else. Got number six. Switch hitting third baseman Chase Headley. Kicks inside. Headley lined out to Barmas. His first time up. Hits the same whether it's right handed or left handed. Came into the game hitting 245 right handed, 245 left handed. When's the last time you saw that? You don't see that often with switch hitters. I know Neil Walker's kind of closed the gap some. As uh, Walker is now hitting 253 left handed, 234 right handed. But typically, a switch hitter has a side that's a little bit better. A favorite. Preference. Headley's been very good lately. He had a tough season for the Padres. Look at where he is now. He's looking at 45 RBIs. It's about uh, half of where he was a year ago. It's actually, a little less than half of where he was a year ago. This guy's an MVP candidate. He was. He had over 100 RBIs last year. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Two out single for Chase Headley and the Padres with their second base runner. Second hit off AJ. Tommy Medica will now face Burnett. Burnett's done a good job here at PNC Park. He is starting his 30th game in this park. 277 earned run average. And in the 
prior 29 starts for the Pirates, the team has gone 19 and 10 when AJ has started. You know, when you when you think about that, I would think there are a lot of Pirates that have very good home numbers because they have won a lot of games here at home. So it's a got to be a result of guys getting the job done here in this yard. 48 home wins. That's PNC Park record. Each time they win, it adds to the PNC Park record. Home wins in a season. Strike one to Medica. One ball and one strike. When you look at teams who have the best home records in baseball, the Atlanta Braves 52 and 22. They're number one. Boston Red Sox at 50 and 25. You look around and find the Pittsburgh Pirates at 48 and 26, the third best home record in the game. Two balls and a strike to Medica. And just when you're looking at overall records, Pirates have the fourth best record. Pirates and Cardinals tied for the fourth best record. Boston first, 92 59. Atlanta next, and the Oakland Athletics, 88 and 61. They're pulling away. In the West, after they swept the Texas Rangers following the Pirates' sweep of the Rangers. Blocked by Martin, keeps the runner right where he is. Two down, three balls, one strike. Headley, the runner at first. Kind of like a boxing match so far. Everybody kind of sparring around a little bit. Nothing heavy landed so far. And Padres will get familiar with one another as the week goes along. Three night games and then a 1230 matinee on Thursday. 3 1. Full count of 3 and 2. So Headley will run with this next pitch. Medica comes up from Double A San Antonio. Straight to the big leagues. Getting an opportunity to play first base pretty much every day here in late September. Payoff pitch from Burnett. There goes Headley. And it's high and he walked him. First walk of the game issued by AJ. His 61st walk of the year. And he just said ask him. Wanted Russell Martin to turn around and ask Bruce Dreckman where that pitch was. Wants a clarification. Let's ask him there. Let's see where the pitch was. Close enough to ask. And you know, you know, anybody can request the umpire. The pitcher can ask him. Hey, ask him. Ball gets away and down to third base goes Headley. Medica stays at first. Heads up by Headley. Wild pitch puts Headley at third base. Not heads up by Medica. Russell Martin might have been fortunate that ball hit his foot. Otherwise, both runners would have moved up. Medica at first base and Headley at third. Padres with the first man at third base in the game. Pirates have not had a base runner yet. 1 0 pitch to Kyle Blanks. A strike. Blanks had a bit of a stint on the disabled list this year. He had tendonitis in the Achilles and was activated last day of August. Staying put. Blanks hitting right handers at a 226 clip. Just off the plate for a ball, two and one.
kind of a quiet atmosphere tonight, Tim, uh, compared to the weekend. The weekend, a lot of energy. But I'll tell you, one of my PNC 2013 moments was when the ball club took the field, first game back after that trip. Oh, yeah. It, it, exciting, electric. Boost pumps. It, it, it was phenomenal. Unrehearsed, it was spontaneous. It wasn't choreographed like so much of the stuff we see. It was just electric. The Pittsburgh Pirates took the field after sweeping the Rangers, and this place went nuts. Two balls and two strikes to Kyle Blanks. Now they're revving up a little bit. Finish him off, AJ. Blanks will get another. Parrot making a new friend. He makes a lot of them. Some of the little ones have a, a love hate relationship with Parrot. He can be intimidating at times. He usually wins them over. Two on, two out. Two AJ. balls, two strikes, and Burnett's pitch to Blacks. Three and two, Medica goes. Chance to throw him out on the ball in the dirt. So now second and third with a full count. AJ trying to go downstairs again and another wild pitch. So that gets Medica over to second base. Two wild pitches in the inning that moved up runners. It gives him 11 and, the, the, and, and counting. He's <laughs> we've got a bunch of them. There comes the payoff pitch. Strikeout number seven for A.J. Burnett. Padres strand two. Top of the order up when we come back. Sports is brought to you by Kia. To learn more, visit PGHKiaDealers.com and by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Fox. Beautiful night in Pittsburgh. Crisp early autumn air, too, at the ballpark. A.J. Burnett with seven punch outs for the early part of the game for the first four innings. Pirates trying to find a way on base now as Jose Tabata takes a ball from Andrew Kashner. Between innings, A.J. Burnett had a conversation with Bruce Dreckman. Trying to clarify what the strike zone might be. Yeah, my, uh, my theory would have been as that ball has bounced to short. Nice play by Sedano. Very, very nice play, above average play. 
My guess would be that he was saying, well, you know, what about when I asked you to check down at first base? When I when I asked you, when I asked you to appeal, right? Straighten that out. AJ did gesture over to first base like he wanted an appeal from the mound. Usually get it from the catcher. Neil Walker is 0 for 1. Let's see what Kashner is like from the stretch. So we, uh, try that. Not had a base runner yet. Strike to Walker. Wanted to mention this, Steve. Today's game between the Washington Nationals and the Atlanta Braves postponed due to the tragedy in the Navy Yard there today. The shootings at the uh, Naval Headquarters, the Command Headquarters there. It's a terrible, terrible story. And uh, they will play a split doubleheader tomorrow, but that certainly is incidental compared to. What has happened there in our nation's capital today? And Walker grounds out to second base for the second time. He's 0 for 2. There was a moment of silence held before the game here tonight. I'm sure all around baseball and other sporting events. Just happening too often. Andrew McCutcheon 0 for 1. He struck out in the first. Chance of MVP begin as he settles into the batter's box. Andrew, in order to make a run of the batting crown, needs to put together some more multi hit games. Not that he hasn't done that enough this year. 57 multi hit games, second in the league. But uh, certainly that's going to help his cause if he wants to win the batting crown and catch Michael Kadir of Colorado, who's hitting 332 to lead the league. Have a player in the hunt for the batting title. Another Pedro Alvarez in the hunt for the home run title. And of course, going back to McCutcheon, he is in the running for the most valuable player award too. And the whole group in the race, for postseason play. Two balls, they have two strikes to catch. Two and two. Trying to figure out this strong right hander who four starts ago pitched extremely well against the Pirates in San Diego. Seven innings, one earned run. To Sedano. It's a good hot. Well, how about Andrew Kashner? He's perfect through four. We'll head to the fifth. Still no score in Pittsburgh. Ago, we mentioned Andrew Lambo getting the minor league player of the year award Nash and 32 home runs between Altoona and Indianapolis. But Andrew Lambo had a pretty stellar high school career in the San Diego Padres, was the nearest team geographically at Newberry Park High School. 
in Southern California. Look at a young Andrew Lambo, or at least a younger Lambo. But look at the numbers he put up in two seasons, a 466 average. He hit 22 home runs, 17 wins, and he had 15 complete games in two, high, uh, two seasons at Newberry Park High School. And the unfortunate thing, he got called up right before the Pirates went to San Diego. And he was really excited because his family didn't see his major league debut, Tim and Steve. But uh, he ended up getting optioned back to Indianapolis, missed a trip to San Diego. So this is the first time he's playing a team in Major League Baseball uh, nearest to his hometown. So nonetheless, he's a little excited. Of course, he would have been more excited had his family been able to watch him play for the first time in his home state. Ronnie Cedeno hits one to Barmas, who makes a fine play. Good leaping throw by Barmas to retire. Ronnie Cedeno, and there's one out. That turned about as fair play. Cedeno made a top-notch play going the other way. Clint Barmas with that grab and leap that he has patented. Watch him. He'll go get it and throw. Yep, up in the air. <laughs> He's got that move once he gets control of the baseball. He's money. Pitchers certainly love that kind of defense behind them, don't they, Steve? Absolutely. And they'll save you a thousand times more than the time they'll kick a ball and throw it away. It's heavily slanted in that side of the ledger. There's a ground ball again. toward the middle. Barmas smothers it, throws to first, and Morno had to come off the bag. Mm. Oh, almost double down. The effort is applauded. Uh, Clint Barmas just laying it out there for AJ, and Morno did the right thing, really, to prevent the extra base, the possible extra base. Yeah. Got that part. I think he gets him. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, he gets him if the throw is on the money. Jay Burnett. With his reaction. Now Kashner bunch the ball firmly to first. He'll go to second. Get the force out there. Justin Morno read that butt perfectly well. He knew he had time to get the runner at second base. He didn't bother to look. He just turned and threw to second. And the lead runner retired. And Kashner at first base with two outs. Well done. Good decision. You got to be sure. He was sure. A lot of wood on that bunt. Comfortably out at second. Experienced. Good defensive first baseman. Swing and a miss by Venable. And those are more comfortable throws from a left hand thrower than a right hander. Kind of right hander's got to kind of square yourself up and make the throw. The lefties can just kind of sling it. And a sidearm at that comfortable angle. Justin was textbook. Runner takes off. That's Kashner. Throw down to second. And he steals a base. Now Bud Black has said that Kashner can run better than your average pitcher. And this isn't the first time he's done this type of thing. Well, you've got an athlete on your hands. He's hitting 271. He's got a home run. And he can steal a base for you. Nobody was expecting that. This one fouled off. Well, on the 26th of April, Kashner had a base hit, a stolen base, and scored a run to go along with his first major league victory as a starting pitcher. And that is a very rare feat. First guy to do that since Bart Johnson did it for the White Sox in his major league debut in 1969. But Kashner not afraid to run. His second stolen base this year. Trying to get on second base, get into scoring position in front of Venable, who has had a terrific season. Venable, a 2020 guy, 22 homers, 20 steals. The 10th Padre in club history to do it. And the fourth in baseball this year to do it. Andrew McCutcheon should be next when he gets his next home run. Two still to Venable. Be nice to get Venable here and not let the pitcher do the damage that he's trying to do. And 
But Black's got an athlete on his hands. It does surprise the opposition when a pitcher takes off. One two pitch. To center field. McCutcheon ranging back. He's got it. AJ Burnett with a quick inning. Still scoreless. Pirates history brought to you by Day Automotive. 1975, Rennie Stennett tied a major league record going seven for seven in a nine inning game against the Cubs. He collected two hits in the first and fifth innings. The Bucks beat the Cubs that day in a nail biter. 22 to nothing, setting a record for the largest margin of victory in a shutout in the modern era. Thanks to Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. I think John Candelaria enjoyed that offensive support. I would say so. Candyman. You weren't going to blow a 22 0 lead at any point. AJ Burnett talking to Clint Barmas about his defensive ability and what he did that last inning. A lot of folks liking what Clint Barmas did. Justin Morneau clubs one to center field. Venable back. And he makes the catch in front of the warning track. All right, this is getting alarming now. Perfect so far for Cashman. Pirates need a hit. That's an understatement. 13 up, 13 down. This one says come early to a lot of Pirate fans. It would be better if we're all out here and with winter clothes on in late October. I'd rather Halloween comes. Early. I would too. That's the seventh <laughs> game scheduled for the yeah. World Series. October 31st would be the seventh game of the World Series, right? Marlon Bird takes the ball. One ball, no strikes. And Bird takes a strike. They're probably concerned about the pitch count at this point. That's number 48. Ashner has been dealing pretty impressive extremely impressive. One one. To the right side there. jerk goes there. And Andrew Kashner. Retires Marlon Bird for the second time. MLB Tut TV celebrates 11 years. Keep up with the pennant races and catch the rest of the 2013 season in HD quality. Watch every out of market game live on more than 350 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.tv today. You know, Tim, I wonder what uh, Tyler Glass now was thinking sitting in the stands watching Kashner deal at this major league level, the way he's dealing. You know, being a young pitcher, 
That would be pretty impressive. That is Tyler Glass now in the striped shirt. Pedro Alvarez fouls this one off. Alvarez 0 for 1. He flied to center field to end the second. Pedro batting 230. 0 1 pitch. That's up high. Cashner perfect through four and two thirds. That's 14 straight. He has set down. And uh, one more out, then it goes all around the world of baseball. Everybody becomes aware of it. Let's get serious. 1 1. Oh, it's 1 and 2. Francisco Liriano yesterday was making news when he had the no no going through six. One notch ahead by being perfect, Mr. Cashman. Francisco had already walked three or four, maybe two or three at this point. Pedro strikes out. Andrew Cashner is perfect through five innings, 15 straight. He has set down. Say Amarista takes a strike, showed bunt. We start the top of the sixth inning at PNC Park. Along with Steve Blass and Robbie Insmikowski, I'm Tim Neverett. A.J. Burnett has struck out seven at this point in the game. He's given up just three hits. But the story is on the other side in the first base dugout as Andrew Kashner is perfect through five innings. So a whole lot of pitching, but Kashner. Up on the scoreboard is no better than AJ. It's a nothing, nothing ball game. Burnett has been very, very good. You lose track of that. Marista. 0 for 2 tonight. And the pitch. Inside. Got him out of his comfort zone if he had one. Let's go, boys! Tomorrow is Clemente Day. But, uh, big surprise for a local school tomorrow. So myself and a few of my friends who wear uniforms are going. Great. To uh, visit a school tomorrow. Apologize for disrupting their classes. Yeah, I'm sure they're not going to mind. I have a feeling Andrew will also be there. 
as well as members of the Clemente family. Of course, Andrew receiving this year's Roberto Clemente Award. It was announced earlier today, and there'll be some more made about that tomorrow. Two and two to Amarista. Mm, so close. Pretty good looking pitch. Burnett wanted it until by a slow reaction after he catches the ball from Martin. That body language. Downstairs just under that grid. Borderline pitch. Catcher wants his pitcher to get those kind of calls. And he walks it. Second walk issued by Burnett. This is the leadoff variety with a guy who runs pretty well at first base. An AT&T tweet. What causes AJ's curveball to break so much? Old wrist snap, something else. It, it's all about the spin. It's all about the spin. And when you release the ball, if you can put a lot of spin, no matter how you hold it, you can generate a lot of spin. And that's and, and, and the release point. So you want to release out and on top, out on top with a lot of spin. And that means the forward part of your windup. The wrist snap puts the spin on the ball, and if you release it out in front of your body instead of back, you've got something going for you. It just starts biting. If your body's out in front of where you release the ball, it's never really going to catch up and, and start biting downward. You're just going to be trying to get it back to work and possibly in the strike zone. If you release out in front with a lot of spin, there's your big time breaking curveball. And the slower you throw it, the more the break. Ed Jerko for two. Jerko flying to center field in the first inning and struck out swinging in the fourth. All right, there you go. Everybody has their own styles, keep keeping score. A lot of K's there for the seven strikeouts for Burnett. Right now, one run would look huge. But it's going to be work trying to create a run from either one of these two pitchers. They're both dealing. Just three base hits in the ball game. Padres have them all. Strike two to Jerko. The Padres have had the Pirates number at PNC Park. For whatever reason, since this ballpark opened up, the Padres have never lost a series here. They're 28 and 10. Pretty good lead. 0 oh, 2. Struck him out. Strikeout number eight. There's a big breaking curveball. A lot of spin. You can give him, yeah, you can you see that on the Super Mo Allegheny Health Network bringing that look. A lot of wrist action that creates the spin. If you give him a swing at that ball that far out of the strike zone, you got something working. Chase Headley had a base hit in the fourth inning, and he lined out to Barmas back in the second one for two. The eight strikeouts for Burnett, two below his season high of 10 that he recorded on opening day against the Cubs. He's had nine a few times. There goes Amarista, and that ball way off the mark. Russell Martin with an errant throw. You don't see that very often out of Russell Martin. Stolen base number three for Amarista. Now they go ahead, runs in scoring position with one out. Yeah, well, the thing is, Russell might have had to hurry because. The runner got such a big jump. I don't know if he's going to have a chance to get him or not. Possibly. But if you combine a big jump like that with an air and throw, no contest at second base. Well, Clint Hurdle wants to match up Russell Martin with A.J. Burnett primarily for the reason that Martin can help A.J. keep the running game under control. A.J. has a very slow delivery to the plate out of the stretch, and teams will run on him. 
And so sometimes if you see AJ pitching on a Sunday, sometimes you might see the backup catcher catching on a Sunday. Glenn Hurdle will sit out Martin on the Saturday night and have him start on the Sunday so he matches up with Burnett. And when you look at the guy who pitches in the rotation before Burnett, that's Francisco Liriano. Tony Sanchez has been catching him and Tony assured me when we were on the road trip he said I am not his personal catcher he said that I don't want to get that label he said it's just that's how it works in the rotation they want to match Russell up with AJ nobody's got any personal catchers here and he's walked Headley. Russell thinking about taking a shot at second base. I've never been a big fan of the subject of personal catchers, but uh, there have been whether they want to call them that or not. Carver and Carl, for example. Uh, Maurice to uh, put the brakes on. Yep. And I think if Headley has departed toward first base, you're going to see a throw to second base. AJ was expecting he was down on his haunches, thinking that they might take a shot. Two on and one out now for the Padres. We've had multiple base runners on two different innings now. Second and third in the fourth. And now first and second in the sixth, this time with one out. Where's that ground ball? Where's that ground ball? Tommy Medica is the hitter. Well, they could certainly use the ground ball. A.J. Burnett, 72.4 percent of balls put into play prior to the game tonight have been hit on the ground. It's the highest rate in the majors this season. Highest rate he's had as a pitcher. Yeah, his approach has changed over the years. He's not a kid anymore. So yeah, rightfully so. Keep the ball down more. Not throwing it. 97, 96, 98. 1-0 pitch to Medica. In for a strike. In fact, when you look at his numbers from 2011 with the Yankees, 60 and a half percent was his ground ball percentage. When he came to the Pirates, it leaped by 10 percent up to 70.4 percent. One and one to Medica. Maurice off second, Headley off of first, one out. Let him know you're there, AJ, so he didn't start creeping out more than he's legally allowed to. And Walker shaded up that way a little bit to keep an eye on him, but that's a pretty substantial lead initially. There's ground ball over the mile. Too slowly hit for two, so Barmas will take the one. Takes what the play gives you. Runs out to Barnes, second and third, and two down. Getting better with age. You see that big jump from 2011 to 2012 in ground ball percentage. Home runs per nine have gone way down. Of course, it's hard to hit a ground ball out of the park. Yep, that's the reason for that. Career best for both ground ball percentage and home runs per nine. Now he's got to find a way to throw it someplace that creates an out, leaves all those two runners in scoring position out there. He just can't really afford to give up anything right now with the way Kashner is pitching. Well, this happened in the fourth inning, same situation, second and third with Kyle Blanks at the plate. AJ won that battle, striking out Blanks. You're telling me before the game, these Padres have been pretty good in two out scoring situations. Yeah, second best in the National League, 41.1 percent of the time they will score with two outs. The Giants, the top team, 42.2 percent. Pirates on that list too, fourth. Two out runs in the National League this year. The Giants just haven't been able to do enough. Maybe their percentages are good, but they've only won 69 games. One ball, one strike to Kyle Blank. Second and third, two down. Top of the sixth. Come back. AJ will take care of it. Right. Two more base runners stranded. 
That's six left on base for the Padres. We're still scoreless. Pirates trying to break up the perfecto of Kashner. For the Padres, A.J. Burnett has stranded six base runners, put two on with walks in the sixth inning, but again, getting the out when he needed it. It's at and tweet, who has the toughest schedule for the rest of the season? Us, the Reds, or St. Louis? I'll well, take a look. We'll show you that. Who has who left and what the winning percentages of the remaining teams combined are. Russell Martin swings and misses at strike one. Of course, you know the Pirates' schedule. Cincinnati and Chicago still left. 481. That's tough. Cardinals will finish on the road in D.C. against the Nationals and at Wrigley Field against the Cubs. One and one now to Russell Martin. Now it's going to be tough for all three of those teams. You're just trying to find ways to get wins. But uh, nothing's easy. Strike two to Martin as he fouls this one away. Course you'd, you'd love to play as much as you can against the teams with a lot of losses, you know, more losses, but uh, doesn't work out that way. Even, you know, whoever you're playing right now is just a grind for, for the contenders. It's outside. Count even two and two. You know, according to. Uh, the numbers when you look at the strength of schedule numbers there's winning percentages combined the Cardinals would have on paper the easiest road bucks the toughest. So they still have to play the games. Cardinals have yet to start tonight in Denver. Swing and a miss and Martin strikes out 16 straight. Well. This is a heading in the direction of Homer Bailey's work last year. Sure no hit against the Pirates. He's been very effective with that slider. He had a little more break than the slider. The slider seems to be a little flatter, but breaking ball nonetheless, and he gets the strikeout. Pitch to Barmus. He takes a strike. Barmas hit one up the middle last time up. Would have been a base hit. It hit the glove of Kashner and deflected to Jed Jerko, who made a diving stop, got up and threw Barmas out. I had a circle around that one. There's a pitch that misses inside. Also had a circle around the play that uh, no Jerko made on uh, Marlon Bird. That was in the fifth inning. Mm -hmm. Barnes lets that one go for a ball, two and one. I see a base hit coming over here, and this at bat. 
You've got the crystal ball. 2 1. Right into the glove of Headley. <laughs> well, Barmas has been on him twice. And that time, Headley took away a double from Barmas. And that was a. I'll give a circle around that one. In a perfect game, I'll give that one a circle for sure. Reaction play, hot corner, that ball is blistered. Didn't wind up looking terribly difficult. But he's got to make it. That pitch on the inside part of the plate or even off the plate. That's a pitch that Barmas can pull. He saw one of those in Texas against Tanner Shepherds and hit it off the foul pole for a home run. Headley's got the wingspan like a Scott Rowland almost. Big guy, got a lot of reach. And uh, this is. Uh, this looks like another half inning of short work for Kashner against the Pirates. He's, uh, he's averaging just a little over 10 pitches an inning, his, which isn't totally surprising in a perfect game. One ball, two strikes to A.J. Burnett. Down the right field side. That's foul. And that's out of play. AJ, by the way, in case you're wondering, has three career home runs. Pitcher's thinking that uh, that might have been the magic hit. Yep. One, two. And AJ strikes out. Andrew Kashner is perfect through six innings. The Padres are the only major league team to have no no hitters thrown by one of their pitchers. Andrew Kashner. Cincinnati Reds come to town this Friday at 7.05. All fans take home an Andrew McCutcheon t-shirt at the gates, courtesy of Highmark. Head to Federal Street before the game, before a Budweiser block party, featuring local live music and meet Pirates alum Sean Casey at the Budweiser bar from 5 to 6. For tickets, go to Pirates.com slash Free Shirt Friday. No score. You see no hits for the Pirates and... Bucks looking to get a hit somehow, some way tonight. As Andrew Kashner gets a visit from his manager, a former pitcher himself, Bud Black. Kashner is perfect through six innings. Pretty exciting. What is exciting for a young player? What do you say to a guy who's perfect through six? Well, uh, you say, "Way to go, young man! Keep it going." 
<laughs> Bud Black, uh, remember the old days? Everybody's always heard the story when he was pitching for the Giants. His catcher was Steve Decker, so he had Black and Decker. The Padres have been no hit seven times. A.J. Burnett owns one of them. I know about one of them. I know about another one. Cedeno over the head of Alvarez down the left field line. Cedeno will stop at first base. High chop. Cedeno with his first hit. Bounce so Pedro couldn't come down with it. He had another foot on him, maybe. Mm. Up the ladder, down the ladder. Sedano aboard, and for all the ground balls that AJ Burnett has thrown this year, Pirates have not had a double play tonight. Rene Rivera, backup catcher, batting in the eighth spot, would be a candidate, you'd think. Pitch outside for a ball. Just talking about the no hitters and again said it as we're going to break the Padres are the only team in baseball to never have a pitcher throw a no hitter for them. Seven times they've had one against the first one. Was thrown by a pirate. The doctor Doc Ellis on June 12 1970. There's the LSD no hitter. To the right side and Rivera's got a hit. Two on and nobody out. And the perfect opportunity for the Padres as they bring up their perfect pitcher to bunt the runners over. By the way, I still don't believe to this day that Doc was on LSD when he pitched no hitter. I just want that on the books. Is that a doubleheader that day? Was it game one? The Doc pitch? Yeah. I don't remember it being a doubleheader. Maybe I was on something. <laughs> <laughs> Not. Not. And now, Ben Mazzaro up in the bullpen. No, well, AJ has given up five hits to this point. No runs. Kashner, hard bunt down to third. They'll get the run in the middle. Alertly done by Pedro. And Kashner did uh, exactly what he needed to do bunt the ball hard enough to get AJ out of the equation and force Alvarez to make the play. If you don't have the wheel play on the shortstop moving then. Uh, third baseman has. No alternative. Available at third base he's got to look around and they get the force play. Kashner at first base. Savanio at third. One out and Venable the hitter. Venable puts this one in the air to shallow center field. Savanio tagging up McCutcheon makes the catch. Here comes the throw. It's up the line and the Padres get on the board. Ronnie Savanio scores on a sacrifice fly by Venable and it's one to nothing. Just enough speed at third base, just deep enough to center field. Creates the first run of the ball game. And it's looking huge right now. Didn't get a lot of it. Thought we might have a chance. But, uh, not to be. Ball hit the side of the mound. Yep. The throw looked to be online. RBI number 53 for Venable. Two outs, runner at second for Alexei Amorista. Amorista walked and was stranded on base in the sixth inning. Ball and no strikes to Amorista. For his last 19 at the plate. Blocked by Martin keeps Kashner at second base. After Kashner stole a base in the fifth inning, 
Pirates will pay a little bit more attention to him on the bases. One hundred pitches for A.J. Burnett. That was a strike. Two and one. So far in all 13 of A.J.'s home starts, he has given up three runs or less. But the Pirates with nothing offensively. Nothing tonight. Zero. Not even a walk. And certainly something you don't want to have happen to you during a pennant race is what's going on here with what Cashner's dealing the Pirates. Three one. Strike two. Amarista the thought it was ball four, but on the inside part of the plate again. It's a good part of the strike zone. Keep it where it is, AJ. We can get one for it. Three balls, two strikes. Fouled off the payoff pitch. Well, Cincinnati's up 2 nothing on Houston. A home run by Zach Cozart. He's given the Reds a lead in that interleague game. Reds trailing the Pirates by three and a half to start the night. Cardinals and Rockies just underway from Coors Field in Denver. Payoff pitch again. Marista fouls it off again. AJ was the last batter in the bottom of the sixth inning. This one down the left field side, and that ball will go foul. And we're just working AJ, working him hard here in the top of the seventh inning. Cashner pretty athletic. He doesn't clog up the base paths like most pitchers. And he's a big boy, 6'6, 220. Two outs. He's going on contact. Keep following it off. Just run him into giving up a hit. Third. Three two. Hill. And Marista plunked on the payoff and he'll go down to first. Out of soft tissue. That's going to be a sore thigh. First and second and two down. Maybe that was punishment for fouling some of the balls off. Marista <laughs> still working out the effects of the hit. Burnett talking about how to tackle Jed Jerko here. Jerko 0 for 3. Well, Marista seems to be okay. Had to figure that there's a, a possibility of this batter right here being the last for AJ one way or the other. Mazzaro's ready in the pen. Hopefully AJ gets him. Jerko, base hit. Kashner's going to come around. Here's the throw from Tabata. It is not in time, and Kashner beats it. It's two nothing. An RBI single for Jed Jerko. 
close at home plate. Tabata made an accurate throw, but with two outs, pitcher on the move. He's in the background there. It's a pretty good jump, and they're going to send him. That close as he gets under the tag, the swipe tag of Russell Martin, and that's going to be a trade there. Well, Burnett leaves after six and two thirds innings. Gives up two earned runs on six hits. And Cashner's done some of the. Pirates and Cards 87 and 62. The Reds three and a half off the pace, and Vin Mazzaro takes over for A.J. Burnett. Numbers for Vin. Rob King sounds like he's on the case. He's on Thanks, it. Rob. He's on it. Chase Headley batting left handed. Fouls one off. Keep it right here. This game is not out of hand. Uh, first hand experience. We were. Sitting on a no hitter yesterday after six innings, and all of a sudden it uh, it changed. A couple swings of the bat. So uh, keep it where it is. See how it plays out. Two men out, two on. Zaro charged with getting Headley here to get the last out of the top of the seventh. Get us to the stretch. And in spite of what Kashner is doing on the hill, you're right. It is just a two to nothing ball game. You never know how bats can start to break out all of a sudden. Oh, one. It just seems like it's 12 nothing when a guy's pitching a perfect game. A little different psychological. <laughs> but the issue is right here at hand with Mr. Headley. Burnett on the hook right now. You mentioned it earlier, Homer Bailey's no hitter against the Pirates here at PNC Park last September. Pirates prior to that hadn't been no hit since 1971. You remember it? Mr. Bob Gibson did it. Mr. Gibson, the Cardinals. Three and one to Headley. Headley had a home run in yesterday's game with Atlanta. He has five home runs in his last 10 games prior to tonight after having just five in his previous 96 games. Just had a look at the man of the hour, Mr. Kashner, doing 
everything for the Padres. In the air to left field and deep. On the run, Tabata. He makes the over the shoulder catch. Two runs come in on two hits, two left. Stretch time at PNC Park. A.J. Burnett and the Pirates down 2 0 to Andrew Kashner and the Padres. Fans, it's time for the seventh inning. Smiley Cookie and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. along the bottom. And Andrew Kashner, who tonight became one of five pitchers in the last 10 years to have more than one stolen base in a season, is also pitching a perfect game into the seventh inning. This former bullpen guy, who by the way, again a reminder, he's gone into the seventh inning his last five starts, something like that. He has gotten stronger and stronger as the season has progressed. Just the third at bat for Jose Tabata. He's grounded out twice. And the eyes of Major League Baseball are upon him. It's outside. It's two and one. And every pitch or every ball that he throws that is hit will make him praised right now. Talk to anybody that's carried a no hitter this far. On top of that, a perfect game. There it goes, a base hit. Jose Tavita breaks it up to start the seventh. There you go. Well, tip of the cap to Andrew Kashner for the first six innings. A tremendous effort by the Padre right hander, but Jose Tabata gets him here in the seventh. And, and they're doing the right thing right now. The catcher, Rivera, Headley over, just to talk to him. Let the adrenaline go down. Let, let, let him catch his breath now. And that's, that's what you do when a no hitter is lost at this point. And way to go, Jose Tabata. Again. It's a two nothing game. The Pirates are in business here in the bottom of the seventh. The reaction. OK. Yep. Now the tying run comes to the plate. Sh shades of yesterday afternoon. With Liriano going out the, the base hit and then uh, well I guess Neil's got to hit it over the fence doesn't he? To really get it similar to what we saw. There's the one oh. Ball one strike. Good off speed pitch. 
Well, the changeup to left-handers. That's if you're a lefty going up there against Cashner, secondary pitch primarily is going to be the change. Right-hander, you're going to see the slider. And Walker up in the air to left. One out. Neal's 0 for 3. Andrew McCutcheon will now face Kashner. Kashner has struck him out. Andrew has grounded up. Grounded to short in the fourth. Just for your information, Kashner has given up a dozen home runs. And it's a very modest number after 25 or 24 starts coming into tonight's game. Strike to Kutch. Nothing in one. Keep in mind he uh, does a good bit of his pitching at the ballpark in San Diego, which doesn't give up many, but still an impressive number on the low side. 18 straight batters retired to start the ball game before Tabata's hit to start the seventh. One ball and one strike. And the San Diego Padres will remain for now the only team in Major League Baseball without a pitcher that has thrown a no hitter. Good. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, that uh, that base hit unties the knot. It changes everything. The whole perception of this ball game changes with one swing of the bat. Now it's a two nothing ball game with a chance to get right back at it. This one fouled off. Two balls, two strikes. One out. McCutcheon represents a tying run. Two two pitch. McCutcheon ground ball to Sedeno. Hey! Flips to Jerko back to first to Medica and ends the inning on a double play. Jose Tabata breaks up the perfect game, but it's still 2 0 Padres. Chris Young, September 22nd, 2006, had a no-hitter broken up in the ninth. Joe Randa was the guy that got it done with that one right there. But Chris Young flirted with a no-no. That's what came the closest of any Padre. That's what you call breaking it up, hitting it over the fence. No-hitter, shut up. Jason Grilly comes on to take over. He'll be the third pitcher used by Clint Hurdle tonight. 
Burnett. Uh, AJ goes six and two thirds. A couple of runs on those six hits. Didn't mention three walks, eight strikeouts. Sometimes you just pitch on the wrong night. Yep, no run support tonight for AJ Burnett. Well, Tommy Medica will lead off the first baseman facing Jason Grilly. Now Grilly, his last three outings, he's been unable to finish them. He has gone two thirds of an inning in each of his last three outings. Last time he could have gotten a call, which would have been striking out the side. Didn't get it. And that uh, added that to the string. And Medica, a little comebacker to Grilly. One pitch, one out. That's how you like him. Trying to work Jason back into the mix. Breaking ball downstairs. It's a little chop. Really will now face Kyle Blanks. And pitch to Blanks is in for a strike at 90. For three, and Blanks in the second inning had a base hit. He has struck out and grounded up. Blanks lets that one go. The off speed pitch to slider. Really will remain in a situation where he'll come out of the bullpen in different situations late. Last night, if or yesterday, I should say, if Justin Morneau didn't drive in the go-ahead run, really was going to come in in a tie game in the ninth instead of Melanson. There's a line drive. Leaping is Barnes over his head for a base hit. And Blanks has two hits tonight, two for four. All boats, but not quite. Super, Super Mo Allegheny Health Network. Surge keeping an eye on Jason Grilly, charting his activity. One out, one on. Ronnie Cedeno takes outside for a ball. Ronnie had a base hit in the seventh. Came around to score the game's first run on a sacrifice fly by Will Venable. Pitch. That's in for a strike. One ball, one strike. By the way, I guess we should note that uh, Houston Street is not in the building. The closer, who has 30 saves, uh, personal matter, death in the family, grandmother, uh, that uh, he has he has left the ball club to be at that service. Street is expected to be back here before the series is over. One ball and two strikes is the count to Ronnie Cedeno. Into right field. He does it again. First it was over Pedro's head, now it's over Morneau's head. Runners at the corners with one out. So Grilly's allowed two base runners here in the eighth. Another chop by Cedeno, opposite direction of the first one. Over Justin's head. Pirates have to be alive for any possibility. Yet Pedro deep at third base. Rene Rivera has two hits, two for three. 
Pirates not expecting anything tricky. Rivera came into the game hitting a buck 92. Struck out looking. In the third inning, and then has two singles to back that up. One in the fifth, one in the seventh. Double play candidate. Most catchers are. So Daniel goes. Martin a throw down and missed the target. A stolen base. For Cedeno, his second one with the Padres. Pretty good jump on Jason here. I think he's looking for a run and hit there. He's looking back at the batter. It's kind of a an indifferent start by Ronnie. <laughs> he gets in there. I think he was expecting the to take a shot. And field is in now. One out, one one pitch, and for a strike to Rivera, one and two. Two runs on eight hits for San Diego. Fires just one hit. Time called. By home plate umpire Bruce Drackman. At the request of Rivera. John Mar Gomez now loosening up. In Denver, the Colorado Rockies have put a run up on the Cardinals. It's 1 0 in the second inning. Foul down to play down the right field side. And Jason has gotten him into a situation where. The strikeout would fit very nicely. Well, he needs a strikeout here. Yep, get on the other side of Rivera. You've got the pitcher up, and he's a good hitting pitcher. However, he is a pitcher trying to hit still. Two. He got the strikeout. First base is open, so Martin's got to throw down. And Jason going to the breaking ball because the fastball is not where it used to be. Good decision, good result. Way out of the strike zone, but he gets Rivera to chase. Step toward leading, leaving a couple more runners on. This is this would not be the first time they've left runners on second and third. Two. Got to finish it off. Kashner, 255 hitter. Strike one to Kashner. Well, Padres found something in him when they converted him to be a starter. During the second half of this season, Kashner has figured things out pretty well. Continues to go seven innings at least. Strike two. Okay, now a couple 92, 93 mile an hour fastballs by Jason. Will he go to the breaking ball now again? And if he does, Russell Martin better be on the alert because he'll try to go downstairs. He's shown him two fastballs. They've been okay. 92 miles an hour, but he's got a lot of wiggle room to try to figure out how to get on the other side of Kashner and keep it at two nothing. Oh, two. Yeah, no surprise. Tried to get him to chase, and he wouldn't do it. Blanks is at third base, and this block by Martin kept him there. Russell just tackled that baseball. Tis the season. Struck him out looking. That's a big strikeout personally for Jason Grilly. 
Padres strand two. We go to the eighth. Bottom of the eighth for the Pirates. They trail two nothing. It's been all Padres tonight. But Jason Grilly finishes the inning, gets a strikeout to end the inning. And, uh, Step in the right direction. People in that dugout realize how important it was for Jason Grilly to get two strikeouts. Now Andrew Kashner back out there for the bottom of the eighth inning. And he has had himself a night. One hit given up so far and take you along the trail for Andrew Kashner. Very effective. Gets Andrew McCutcheon, Marlon Bird, and then this deflection, a great play. One, four, three. Continues to work the Pirates until Jose Tavita goes down the right field line and the spell is broken briefly as Andrew hits into the double play. And one more zero, and he continues to face the minimum. Morrow hits it deep to left, and the new left fielder, Chris Denorfia, tracks it down. Denorfia's in left, but Black's made some changes defensively as Morrow tried to jumpstart the offense in the bottom of the eighth. Amorista moves from left field to center field. Will Venable moves from center field to right field. And Kyle Blanks moves from right field to first base. Didn't look like a spring training scorecard. Yeah. On the defensive part of it, yeah, a lot of cross outs and stuff. You keep a scorecard in spring training? I do. Long winter trying to get. I was just asking because I hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in two to Marlon Bird. Actually, you keep a good scorecard. Learn from the gunner. 0 oh, 2 pitch. And Bird watches it in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. That's not Steve's, but That's that is a very neatly, well done. Yeah. neatly done one by a fan. Letting us look over their shoulder. Been pretty neat for Cashner to keep one. Bird strikes out. Still the minimum number of batters faced. Six, six strikeouts in his package. Unhittable breaking ball. If you chase, not going to be able to do much with it, if anything. 
he has been that good tonight. I think it's safe to say this is the best start of his major league career. <laughs> Probably by a long way and he's had some pretty good ones. Yeah he came in with an ERA of 340 I mean that's. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Nine wins for a club that has won 68 games lost 80. Alvarez 0 for 2 tonight. Struck out his last time up in the fifth. And in the second inning, he flied to center field. 85 pitches thrown by Kashner to this point. And you'd expect Pedro to see a changeup, which he just did. That changeup fades away from the lefties. Well, this big, strong young man, 6'6, 220, uh, he doesn't appear to be fatigued. He's had a busy night on the mound. He's run the bases a little bit. Uh, this is a big time performance. Still getting it there at 95 miles an hour, 95, 96. Let's see if that sets up his change. High right, fastball. Well, he's one and two. He's set up a lot of things right now. Comes. Did he go? Yes, says third base umpire Dan Bellino. Pedro rung up on strikes. And Andrew Kashner has faced the minimum number of batters through eight innings. He's given up just one hit. Our kids days. Join us this Sunday as the Bucks host the Reds at 135. The first 25,000 fans take home a Pirates scarf. Thanks to Highmark, come early for the number one Cochran Family Fun Zone on Federal Street. Kids run the bases after for tickets. Go to Pirates.com. Sunday against the Reds, you get that scarf. Just in time for the cooler weather. Pirates bats have been a little more than cool tonight. Those guys, well, they're not cooled off yet. Still it. They've been in there uh, in this Gibby since when? The uh, first pitch? Yep. They have the Winnie the Pooh blanket tonight. I guess it's hard to watch the game with the eye patch down, so the flap was up. They call that a selfie. A selfie? A selfie, yep. Take your own picture like that. Learn something new every day, huh, Steve? I do. I do. I do. It's continuing education. <laughs> Jenmar Gomez coming on. Two nothing ball game, ninth inning. Still not out of hand. Keep him right there, number thirty. Lead off man Will Venable takes a strike. Venable 0 for 3, but he did drive in the first run of the ball game in the seventh. 
A sacrifice fly. This one dribbled up the right side. Foul. Four pirate pitchers tonight. Burnett, AJ went six and two thirds, giving up two. Didn't pitch all that badly, just pitched on the wrong night. Mazzaro, a third of an inning. Jason Grilly, one scoreless, a couple of hits, a couple of strikeouts, and now Gomez. So just two runs. Maybe the Pirates can get to him in the bottom of the ninth. Did he go? No. Fans wanted that one after <laughs> after they rang Pedro. They rang Pedro. Up. Let's see from the side swing. Oh, well, you get that every once in a while. That's one of those 50-50 deals. Yeah, he struck him out anyway. Venable down on strikes. Let's check in with Rob King now. He's got a game break. In section 103 and in the first in Colorado, Troy Tulowitzki, an RBI double off Lance Lynn. This will score Corey Dickerson. Colorado out to a 1 0 lead over the Cardinals, guys. Good to hear. Good news from Denver. The Rockies win. Uh, the Pirates can't come back in this one. And it'll be a nice outing for Kashner, but it won't matter heading into two tomorrow's game. They'd still be tied. Cardinals and Bucks. Oh, one pitch. Strike in there, nothing in two. So John Mark Gomez has come out of the bullpen throwing a bunch of strikes. You got seven, eight, nine coming up in the bottom of the ninth, Steve. You gotta wonder. Glenn Hurdle throws a few pinch hitters out there with a big bench. Somebody else give Kashner a try. Only one successful tonight. Jose Tabata with a base hit to lead off the seventh. That's been it. But then he was erased as part of a double play that McCutcheon hit into. Sometimes as a pitcher, you just get lucky. You wind up pitching on the day the other team doesn't score. Is that how that works? <laughs> That's pitcher's logic. Balls two strikes to Alexi Amarista. Oh, two pitch from Junmar. Amarista helping out, getting rid of the baseball, and Jim Jerko fires it up into the seats. That's a new friend. Amarista was plunked by A.J. Burnett in the seventh inning. Got hit on the right leg. Something he'll feel later on, maybe tomorrow. Cincinnati's added a couple of runs at Houston. It's now 4 0 Reds, top of the fifth. Strike three call. Gomez punches out Amarista. Dunbar's faced two batters, struck them both out. 12 Padres have gone down swinging or looking tonight. That's a pitcher's pitch. Right on the zone, right on the line. Jed Jerko. Jerko came up with an RBI base hit in the seventh inning. Drove in a big insurance run. Got Cashner across to score. One for four tonight. And the pride of Morgantown, West Virginia, has a one ball, one strike count on it. Two and one. Bullpen for San Diego has been inactive. Spectators got the night off. Marlon Bird will make the grab, and it's time to grab the bats, get some hits. Last wraps for the Pirates as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Two nothing, San Diego.
For the rest of this series, Eric Stoltz against Jeff Locke. Locke looking for win number 11. Tyson Ross will go Wednesday night against Brown Chuck. And Garrett Cole on Thursday afternoon opposes Ian Kennedy. First begins with Pirates pregame presented by Trip Total Media. Last wraps for the Bucks, trying to get at Andrew Kashner. Who has gone nine innings one time back in 2010 low minors for the Chicago Cubs. But he is dealing tonight. And Russell Martin pops up the first pitch. Sedano will gather it in. One up. He has faced 25 batters. And only thrown 89 pitches to this point in the game. But Barmas up for the third time. Barmas has hit him better than anybody else tonight. Probably hit the hardest ball off him. The line drive to Headley. Well, he had a ball that was ticketed for center field in the third inning, and Cashner's glove got a piece of it, deflected it over far enough where Jerko could make a diving stop on it. But otherwise, that was an easy single with plenty of velocity to get it up the middle. And then in the sixth inning, he had a rocket down to third base that. Chase Headley moved to his right, reached across his body, and stabbed the line drive. No, two and oh, let's get your Barmas, you get your shortstop on the base pass. Garrett Jones hit the ball over the fence, and we'll keep on trucking. Two and one now to Barmas. Well, one other thing you learned from the gunner. Pirates need a bloop and a blast. Yep. Ball to short. Sedano backhands. And Kashner is now one out away from a complete game. Facing 27 batters. That's pretty special. Garrett Jones, last hope for the Pirates tonight. He takes a strike. The last complete game Kashner had was in the minor leagues. 2010 with Tennessee. Double A. He has been terrific. Hey! Just outside the Jones, one and two. Well, so the Bucks. Jones can't get on here. Have to root for Colorado tonight to take the Cardinals. And that's what they're going to have to do as Andrew Kashner faces the minimum. 27 batters tonight gives up one hit a complete game shutout first one for Kashner in his career and the Pirates drop this one two to nothing to the Padres in the opener of this four game series well Tim all I can say is if I had a hat right now I'd tip it uh, to that young man he was absolutely superb breaking balls off speed pitches when he was even behind in the count uh, it was a dominant performance. And all you can do is tip your cap, go in, take a shower, go home, get ready to strap it on again tomorrow. And in the big picture, it's just one loss. It's a, a series with three more games to go. But once again, you don't want to waste that's good pitching. The Pirates gave up two runs. That's many times good enough to win. But if the guy's this good, uh, this this to me wasn't a, an example of Pirate Cole bats. This was. Andrew Kashner. Well, it's Kashner's night. And he can enjoy it now. Pirates fall two to nothing in the opener of this four gamer with the Padres. Let's send it over to Rob King and Kent Jacoby.
All right, Tim and Steve, thanks very much. And, uh, you know, really not a whole lot going on. This is a good pitcher's duel. And unfortunately for A.J. Burnett, who's been in this situation before, he's pitched well and not gotten any runs. He pitched well and didn't get any runs. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's another one of those here we go again games for A.J. He's had so many of them where, you know, he pitches so well, so well, so well, and then eventually, you know, something happens and, you know, he gives up a couple runs and the ball game's over with. But, you know, as Steve said, Tashner was just absolutely fabulous tonight. He only used 97 pitches. And, you know, when you strike out seven batters and you're only throwing 97 pitches through nine innings, that's less than 11 an inning. And you're getting those strikeouts. You are just talking about pounding the strike zone. But you're pounding it with stuff that's, uh, you know, the Pirates were having trouble hitting. It was just a great night for Cashner. And he is our player of the game, brought to you by your Western PA Honda dealers. The line for Cashner. He goes nine, allows just one hit. It was a Jose Tabata leadoff single in the bottom of the seventh. Did not walk a batter. Seven strikeouts. It is one hit away from perfection for Andrew Cashner as the Padres take the first game of this four game set by the final score of two to nothing. Coming up next, it is Pirates post game presented by the Allegheny Health Network. We will have highlights of this game, highlights from around the league, post game reaction from manager Clint Hurdle, and the Pirates will ask Teak as well. All that and much more coming up next. So please stay right here for Pirates post game presented by the Allegheny Health Network. It's up next.